This is Mike Kennedy, M005 Kennedy, and these are mushrooms, of course. I've got two mushrooms here that I've collected. But what we're doing in this video is we're looking at the idea of making a spore print. Now I've printed, downloaded this and printed this out. And all it really is is a white surface and a black surface. Now some people recommend doing it completely on glass, then you can uh, change the background as you want. But I thought I'd just try this since it was provided on the internet as something to do. So really we've got our choices of black and white. So hopefully we'll see anything that's uh, black or color here and anything that's really white here. Now I'm taking a mushroom here that I kind of know what it is, but I'm pretending it I don't right now. So we can uh, do the spore print. So what we're going to do is cut it at the base, lay it on here, and then we're going to cover it over with something uh, to increase the humidity and encourage the spores to drop. You can see I cut the stem off here so I can get it pretty flat. Uh, you'll notice that this mushroom has its tooth. It has little protuberances. I'll call them little teeth that are coming out. Uh, mushrooms either have usually, excuse me, three of the things mushrooms can have, let's put it that way, are uh, they can be toothed, they can have pores, or they can have gills. That's three common things you can look at in some mushrooms to identify them. So here we are. I'm going to take that. There it is. So I've got it covering both black and white. Now I'm going to cover it with something uh, to increase the humidity. Okay, so we're going to cover it with this glass bowl. And we're going to set that here for a number of hours. I'll check it every once in a while. Just, well, no, I probably won't. I'll wait. I'll wait two hours. Uh, we've got a time now of a little after 12 o'clock. So 2 o'clock, we'll open this up and we'll take a look. And hopefully, we'll not only see the color of the spores that have been dropped by this mushroom, here, but we will also see the pattern as well. Sometimes uh, pores and, and gills can be arranged in different ways, and that's important too the whole area. I'm just going to pull up a little bit so that you can see that it pulls it up. See how the the uh, spore print is coming up, the spores. So here's my end result, the spore print. You can see all the fine details in it. I would say that these uh, spores are uh, they're not black, they're not gray, they have a little reddish component to them, I think. And you can see quite a bit of detail in here, too, of the, just like as if it was a fingerprint. So, uh, I think I'm going to experiment more with this, and uh, I'm not sure. I did a class on seaweed pressing, believe it or not, and they use blotter paper. I think I'm going to get some blotter paper in the next mushrooms I do, I think I'm going to do one a little thicker paper that has a little more absorbency than dry the paper and the, the spores will become apparent. Uh, and then I can still get at the spores because I want to be able to do some microscopic identification too. This way uh, would be rather difficult, but uh, it's a good way to try for getting your first spore prints for identification. But uh, they also put them like in a uh, plastic, it, she had kind of a cl crystal clear plastic envelope that she, the person put them in that did the seaweed uh, matting. And uh, I think that would be a good idea. Then you could, um, you could still look at the, them and not damage them. And you could also then take them out of the envelope and you could actually take some of the spores and do something with them if you wanted to. So there you go. How to make a spore print.
failed first time, got it with a second try. And like I say, the disadvantage to this is that you can't get at the spores, but it keeps a record. Some people just spore print on glass and, and photograph it. And that's pretty much it. But, and other people just use, typically use paper and spore print on that. Uh, so, you know, I'm just continuing to learn here, but this is a good way to do it for identification purposes, I believe.